Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Well, we finally reached our last Sunday with you all after three and a half fairly straightforward dull years. A vacancy, a large chunk of a pandemic, the arrival of a new vicar and a fairly tricky 12 months personally has certainly meant that straightforward and dull are not really the right words to use to describe our time in Highbridge. Despite this, it has been an incredible privilege to serve my curacy with this church, to journey deeper in faith with many of you, to find comfort in your care for us as a family, to see God at work among us and to serve the wider community. God has been good to us and God has been faithful. While the time is right and we are excited for, for all that God will do in, through and indeed in spite of us in Yeovil, we are sad to be leaving Highbridge. The parish of Highbridge is what the Diocese of Bath and Wells terms a Magnificat parish. The community this church serves is one of the most deprived in the diocese and Mary's words in the Magnificat are seen as a reminder particularly to those in the corridors of power in our diocese, to recognise ministry that is lifting up the least, the last and the lost, and the challenges this presents, alongside the special place in God's heart for the poor and lowly. So today, as we mark the fourth Sunday of Advent and the countdown to Christmas accelerates, our Gospel reading includes Mary's song, The Magnificat offering an opportunity for us to explore how the Magnificat might shape us as a people of courage, sharing God's love across our community. I'll share the reading with you now. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfilment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Before we reach Mary's song of praise, we witness here a profound and intimate interaction between Mary and her cousin Elizabeth. There is a moment at the very beginning of the narrative that we might miss, where Luke says, Mary set out and went with haste. But why? Well, we know Mary was a young girl who is now pregnant and unmarried. There was no socially legitimate reason for her to be pregnant. This was tremendously scandalous. Our understanding of this story has been shaped by a romanticism, partly created by children's nativity plays. This story is not cute. This is happening to real people. Mary is a real girl, a little girl. A little girl who has disappointed her parents, her husband-to-be, her teachers, her community by falling pregnant with no explanation to offer. 
To have responded to God's call as Mary did faithfully and obediently would have taken considerable courage. So perhaps Mary wanted to get away from this place of disappointment. Well, what then happens? She visits her cousin Elizabeth and is met with joy, a stark contrast to the judgment or disappointment she has previously sensed and experienced. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. To hear these caring, joy-filled words from Elizabeth must have meant so very much to Mary. As a man, it is a courageous move to talk with any sense of authority on the topic of pregnancy or childbirth. But I am profoundly moved by the idea that Mary's womb held the Son of God. God was formed in human likeness in the depths of Mary's body. We read in Psalm 139 that you, God, knit me together in my mother's womb. Before God made his dwelling place among his people, God dwelled inside the body of Mary. In the darkness, the unseen spaces of Mary's womb, God grew and was knit together. And from this unknown dark place, the light of the world is born. From the darkness of Mary's womb, the light of the world is born. There are places of darkness in Highbridge. Those of you who have been part of a community here for longer than I will know this better than I do. The message that from the darkness comes light is something that the town of Highbridge so desperately needs to hear and believe. And St John's is probably the only place they will encounter it. I wonder how this might shape our approach to sharing God's love across our community. After feeling shame and disappointment, Mary and the child she was carrying were declared by Elizabeth to be a blessing. In response, Mary offers her song of praise to God. Mary's song is based on the song of Hannah found in 1 Samuel chapter 2. And it is similarly a song of vindication. Hannah saw in her act of conceiving a divine vindication of her sorrow and humiliation. Mary sees in her own act of conceiving and in that child who is to be born out of that act a sign of the way in which God works. Mary's song is not like many of the songs of praise we sing today, proclaiming how great God is. It is a hard-hitting proclamation of a God who overturns the common order of society. Mary begins by declaring how God has done this in her. He has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant, and as a result, all generations will call me blessed. But what is happening to Mary is a sign of how God works in history. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So what is there for us to learn from this passage as we move forward towards Christmas and continue in our strive to be a people of courage, sharing God's love across our community. Well, there are, I believe, perhaps unsurprisingly, three things. The first is the message that from the darkness of the womb comes the light of the world. From the darkness of the womb comes the light of the world. And that light shines in all the dark places of Highbridge, of Burnham, and of indeed the whole world. No matter how great the darkness, the light of the world overcomes it. The second is that we are called to proclaim the truth found at the heart of the Magnificat, 
that the kingdom of God is a kingdom of great reversal, in which the lowly are made high, the high are brought low, the hungry are filled with good things, while the rich are sent away empty. The last become first, and the least become the greatest. If that isn't worth shouting about here in Highbridge, it isn't worth shouting about at all. And finally, I wonder if one of the ways we can share God's love is to be like Elizabeth. I believe we need more people willing to move past judgment and shaming and to offer God's blessing. We need people who look at the world and see God's redeeming hand at work, not just see the worst in other people and ourselves. I wonder if there were more Elizabeths in the world, if there might be more people breaking out into holy song, like Mary. Go well into the future, led by the God who is faithful, friends. And thank you. Amen.